Welcome back to another edition of Zero Blog 30. Today we have two rounds of the magazine. But before we do that, before I tell you what they are, I need to give a shout out to a couple of the listeners who are, as soon as the episode drops, they start listening. A lot of the folks that listen to podcasts, they work at like 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. So typically we'll release our episodes at 3 a.m. At like 4.30, I got a DM last week after the episode dropped. I woke up Wednesday morning and they're like, Hey, dude, did you know that you did the intro like three times on the podcast today? <laughs> so <laughs> we were having problems starting it out. I couldn't figure out how I wanted to say the beginning. And so everybody got to hear all three iterations of it. So you're welcome. Thank you for always letting us know if we have an issue on the pod, which we used to never have with Nick or Kyle, sometimes Radio Bren. <laughs> we would get from here to here, people would tell us. But now it's like, chaps, you're fucking it up. And I appreciate the listeners letting us know. Hopefully we'll do the same thing today if we really screw it up. Because today we have two rounds in the magazine. Round number one, I just came across this story this morning. I got super excited. So I took some other stuff off the sheets and I was like, we're talking pirates because in San Francisco this week and really over the last couple of months, pirates, real life pirates are showing up and they're taking people's stuff. I shouldn't be happy about it, but before we start, I just need to tell you, I'm thrilled about it. It's, I think it's, I love a good old pirate story. I don't want people's stuff to get stolen. I want it to be like fake people that have their stuff stolen, but the pirates are real. I love real pirates. Yeah. Okay. Round number two, we got a little bit of lie detector goofing that we're going to talk about because one army unit decided that they want to send out a little note to all their troops saying, hey, come on in for a little bit of training. Nobody worry about it. We're just going to strap you to some lie detectors without waivers, without nothing, just some good old fashioned training. I wanted to ask the folks in the squad if they wanted to do that. I highly doubt it. So let's get started, Kay. Let's get going straight into the pirate talk. I want to talk pirates. Let's talk pirates. You guys, look at me. I'm the captain now you of this part of the podcast. The yep. Okay, so pay attention. Yep. Well, technically, Cons is the captain. No, I got your reference, Kate. <laughs> I, don't, I think that was over his head. No, I, I got, got it. It's the most oh, common okay. gift there is probably over the last five years. I'm the captain now. I'm the captain By the now. way, Cons gets Hanks. to be Tom Hanks. You're just a boat hand in this situation. I yes. want to be Wilson. Okay, you can be well, <laughs> different movie, but you can be Wilson. That's fine. Or Bubba. <laughs> We've been reading about upticks in crime across. You know, one of the bigger trends of late is the Kia boys. These guys going around who figured out the hack and on TikTok mm. of how easy it is to steal Kias. And different cities were seeing. I would call them Kia pirates going around taking that. Yeah. Now we have actual pirates out in San Francisco. Homeless pirates are marauding onto houseboats in the San Francisco Bay in the latest criminal em enterprise to plague California. And we went, what was that trip we took out there for the Rugby Sevens World Cup? We yeah. went over to Sausalito and we had lunch surrounded by houseboats the one day. Remember, like, lovely. Hundreds and hundreds wow, and hundreds. Sausalito is great. Did you guys go to that place, mm -hmm. the, the Barrel Tavern, where you're like inside a wine barrel? We should have. I don't know. I just know that wherever we went, we were surrounded by people living on houseboats. I know New York City, some people do that to save money, wherever, but it's becoming a problem out there. Residents along the Oakland Alameda estuary told a community meeting last week. I love a good estuary. Love, love a good them. estuary. Um, <laughs> their boats have been cut loose so that they drift out to sea. One woman even recounted how she rescued another resident on a sailboat in the middle of the night after pirates slashed his rigging lines during an argument. So this Imagine like, hey, that. You go to my bed. Boat. And they were like, bye, bitch, clip, clip, and send him out to sea. And you just wake up, it's three in the morning, you're going to take it, you know, a leak. And you're like, wait a second. I'm in the middle of the friggin' Pacific Ocean. That'd be nuts. Yeah. In the One middle thing of about the this, I've seen some pictures. I think we're using the term pirate fast and loose. There has okay. to be some type of uniform that's involved. Some type. No one called anyone a stallywag, from what I what I've read. Right. I don't. No like one's got that scurvy. There, right. There's certain things that are essential to pirating, and thus I far, I haven't seen a single parrot. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> not a parrot. Nary a peg leg. Not one. Peg leg. Not kind of veterans, Mary. I suppose. I, no, I, no not I even a bottle of rum. No, no. yo ho yo hos. 
No. Anyways, the brazen thieves whose homeless encampments have spilled out of the city and into these suburbs around the city are taking small motor powered dinghies. Picture the name. Maybe this is Navy SEALs going for it, going <laughs> rogue. Be. Yeah, they're and carrying they're the using boats. Them in smash and grab raids on larger vessels and houseboats. During Wednesday's San Francisco Bay Conservation Meeting, community members showed up and um, talked about, hey, we're fighting off pirates in the middle of the night. The police aren't coming. The city's not intervening. What the hell? According to ABC, thieves are arriving at night via the small watercraft. They're using bolt cutters to break into unoccupied boats because a lot of people only go and stay on these on the weekends. Some people live there full time. But, oh, but these the are, this is know. like a super rich area, too. Like every oh, boat yeah. that they're talking about that they showed is crazy expensive. And they're essentially sitting ducks out there. There's no like alarm systems. And even if there is, they say that there's not very many patrollers out there. There's not a whole lot they can do. going to get out to a boat, you know? And it's right. like Wham. we read about every now and then those those people who live out in the boonies of the woods who break, they survive by breaking into cabins all winter yeah. because they know nobody's there kind of thing. Um, the Hermit of the Great North Woods of Maine. Exactly. So the boat owners are blaming the nearby homeless encampments. While police have so far declined to issue a public statement, boaters are also pointing the finger at anchor outs, people who keep their boats, which are often also stolen, and live mm -hmm. rent free by continuously moving their location to avoid the police. So these people steal a boat and then they move along the water all over the place 24-7 so that it's like me running from the parking authority in New York City, always moving my car around, trying to hide from them because I know I have too many tickets. Uh, I mean, honestly, both, that's one of the best part of having a boat is that you can move it. Like you steal in a boat, you can move it. They're not going to be running your tags nearly as much. What exactly. is it, a white boat? So according to both boaters and coastal residents, crime has skyrocketed over the last six months specifically. In March, Oakland City Council passed a new ordinance to give police greater power to seize the boats that are anchored illegally in city harbors. This is meant to give law enforcement tools to target the stolen boats. Um, but a resident said it's every week. Every week somebody's missing something from their boats to their dinghies to their outboard motors or even their cars that are parked in the lot near the boats. Another mm -hmm. resident whose apartment overlooks Jack London Square Marina told CBS a couple of weeks ago, I saw for the first time a high-speed chase on the water with police boats pulling over another boat that was speeding away. Take that, Los Angeles. San Francisco is <laughs> getting a way cooler form of police chase than you. Uh, now, Fort that's Oakland a cop I would sign up to be. To be anti-pirate? Come yeah. on. Like, 23-year-old yeah. Kate walks in and one, either finds a pirate. A pirate, I think, gets it. Two, somebody who stops pirates. So both pirate and stopper of pirates. I'm, so, I'm only going for pirate. Only going for pirate. In really? that if I had to choose, I'm choosing pirate, unfortunately. Um, former Oakland Marina Harbor Master okay. Brock DeLapp. That's a great, <laughs> great name. Yeah, it is. He told NBC, over the last couple of months, it's become severe. Boats are being stolen on a nightly basis. Residents in marinas are scared. They're, taking, they're talking about forming groups. They're arming themselves. Someone's going to get hurt if this is not taken seriously by authorities. Smaller items, again, um, like an outboard motor can fetch three to five grand on the black market. It can also be parted out for scrap. Um, I know how someone who's had my catalytic converter and my tires stolen, I know how this feels. Not I'm great. not a car guy. What? Why are those? It's like, what, what's in those that makes them so valuable? It's whatever it metal element. they use. Yeah, oh, there's some yeah. element okay. that's inside it that they use and break down it. It's worth a lot of money. Maybe copper, something like that. Uh, copper. Brass. Yeah, when I lived in New York City, I came out one morning and my car was basically like just taken apart in the middle of the night. The Oakland Police Department has, but it's a rite of passage, you know? That's what yeah. they to say. You get Excellent the, pirate you know? term, Kate. Why rite of passage, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, gross. <laughs> The Oakland Police Department, no, the problem is they only have two full-time Marine officers patrolling the estuary. So that's that's it, chaps. That, <laughs> yeah. This is your calling. This is your chance, buddy. I know you just moved to California, up. but maybe you need to split time in San Francisco and become a pirate cop. Yep. At the uh, yeah, sheriff's maybe, office, maybe they need them on Lake Michigan. The Possibly. sheriff's office also has its own Marine patrol, but it's part-time and they have other duties. The Coast Guard is stationed in Alameda, Alameda the 11th District. But it's unknown to what extent they enforce property crime. They, I feel like they've got bigger fish to fry with all the tourists out there on the boats and all the other shit going on. That like 
it's not really the, i don't know the, i think that'd be pretty big i think the coast guard if you're in the coast guard this best case scenario because you oh. already get so much attention for drugs but a lot of people like drugs so they don't want you to catch the drugs <laughs> i think a lot of people are anti-pirate yeah well i, I have a I feeling think they would absolutely sign up for the coast guard to beef up their operations much oh, like yeah. we're asking you know the national guard to be teachers in florida I have a feeling they'll get tapped pretty soon to stop the pirates in Alameda Estuary. But you know he, what? I don't think that's one that they would complain about. Like you get tapped no, in the I National agree. Guard to be a bus driver. You're like, what am I doing? They say, hey, we need some pirate cops. Let's go. Yes, absolutely. Oh, easily. That's much more attractive than being a bus driver. Mm -hmm. So Alameda's Marina Village Yacht Harbor managing investor, Steve McFessel, told the San Francisco Chronicle, it's almost the Wild West. It's almost as if you were on a ship and there are pirates out there and there's no government and no one to protect you. And I will say, if I was out on the water at night, I would have trouble sleeping. I would like, this would fuck with my head pretty bad. <laughs> it would. It's kind of scary. Already sleeping on a boat? Have you ever spent the night on a small boat? No. Yeah, it's not great. It's pretty freaky. Wait, I have neighbors. No, that's a lie. I slept on a boat one time, but it was docked. I have Doesn't count. Who, I don't uh, think it counts count. if it's docked. No. no. Yeah. They had a boat on an estuary of the Chesapeake Bay and they took their family on a little trip and they put their anchor down by some little island and they woke up. The dad woke up in the middle of the night with, with two like young kids, wife on board, and they had drifted to the middle of a shipping channel. And so he woke up to like look at this <laughs> massive wall. And he's like, "What the fuck is this?" And it was like one of those giant cargo ships. Oh like, my gosh! Oh. Like, <laughs> so it's like that's like endless. nightmare scenario, right? Nightmare like, fuel. Um, boat owners are being advised to secure their vessels as strongly as possible, to not leave any small items unattended or unlocked, and to dock their vessels at marinas and harbors where security measures and surveillance is possible. I bet now the stolen boats are getting stolen. I bet oh, there's like quadruple question. stolen boats out there getting parked from place to place. You're like, hey, that's my stolen boat, dickhead. Um, yeah, this is bad. That's not good. Not good. Yeah. You know why I part mean, of this? I hate the story that it's, that it's happening. I wanted to ask you guys. You could take over. You could become a career pilot, uh, pirate. What body of water are you doing it on? Or where? What country? What area of the world? You know you're going to get away with it. Where do you want to be a pirate? What's that lake in Missouri that everybody parties on? The Ozarks. The Ozarks? Yeah, I'm going to the lake of the That's Ozarks. That's real white trash, Kate. That's Anywhere so white trash. That's so white trash. What oh do I God. need to steal to be happy? High noons, cigarettes. Guess what's all over boat. that lake? High noons Pontoons. and cigarettes. Everybody's boozed up. They're all out on those floaty mats. And I just walk. They connect all their pontoons together. I walk from pontoon to pontoon like the I'm pontoon on a bridge. Pirate. Yeah. I yeah. think I, I don't know, man. I think I'm going. I'm just bouncing around the Hawaiian Islands. I mean, mm -hmm. warm, warm water, great weather. If I have to be a pirate, you don't want to ever have to deal with inclement weather. So, like, I'm avoiding the Caribbean because no. I don't want to get hurricanes. I don't know that we get too yeah. many, like, tsunamis out in hawaii it's pretty much paradise at all times so i think i go hawaii what about you but that that fire situation is scary that they got going on there yeah but i'm out on the water so i mean that's a very sad situation i'm not making light of that or joking about what's going on in hawaii and those wildfires but wildfires don't affect me if anything it pushes more people onto boats and as a pirate that's good for business wait we can make fun of hurricanes but not fires that's too soon yeah that's too soon okay all right that's fair. <laughs> Second, mine, Monte Carlo. I oh. you're gonna get so much booty so, and riches and so many dude, hot people. Not, I mean, all right, Ooh, officer tweet coming or uh, comment coming. When we were in Monte Carlo and and San Tropez, the yachts that were there, Ooh. it's not. <laughs> I mean, and and in Monte Carlo, it's like every car is a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. It's unbelievable. So that's a good call. There's just so much I'd wealth. Be making so much money, so much. And money. those every people, single one of those yachts, and they wouldn't even notice that it's missing. Right. A lot of that's times. what I was just gonna say. Those people are a level of wealth where if you stole their yacht, they'd be like, "All right, I guess we'll try to get that back, but it's not a big deal. I have three others." Um. So right. that's a good call with Monte Carlo. I highly suggest going to Monte Carlo if you can. Yeah. 
We'll get on that. We'll see. <laughs> a little quick. Fly. I just want to say too, this is kind of a tale as old as time. This is a story in the New York Times from the archives from 1977. Um, according to the New York City Police Department Harbor Unit, one billion dollars with a B. This is in the 70s. Wow. Worth of marine property is stolen nationally each year. In New York, it has the highest rate of marine theft of any state um, with a total of 8.5 million. But across the country, it was a billion, boat theft and like pirating of boat shit is a was a billion dollar industry in the 70s. So seven billion dollar industry today. It's uh, so I'm sure it's Nearly much eight. more of a of an issue. Yeah. What's the difference crazy. between a pirate and a marauder? Ooh. Is there one? I is a know. pirate everything happens on shore, and a marauder is somebody who comes from the shore or from the no, sea? No, no, pirates. A pirate sticks to the water. A marauder heads on to land and fucks shit up at the pubs. Yeah, that's what I said. Marauder is a person who marauds. A raider. Marauds is Rome in search of things to steal or people to attack, raid and plunder. Uh, mm. so I Which think would you rather be, marauder or pirate? I think a marauder because you can really do it all. You can you can you could do all the pirate stuff, but then you can also go on land and and do your bad business on land too. More of a jack of all trades kind of guy, right? Or lady, right? Right. right, right. Thank right. you. Also, There's high school see... down the road. That's their their mascot, St. Peter's Prep. I th believe they're the marauders. This Fun wasn't finance. necessarily theft, but did you guys see the doctor that got busted on his mega yacht off Martha's Vineyard a couple months ago? Mm -mm. No, what happened? Mm -mm. Family man, by all accounts, like a son, all daughter, a doctor, married, good reputation. A call comes from this boat off, I think it was Martha's Vineyard one night, and this guy's like in his 60s or 70s now. And it's a woman on the boat being like, I don't feel safe. There's some crazy shit going on on this boat. The police bust the boat. Cocaine. All sorts mm -hmm. of drugs. Hookers. They're making mm -hmm. pornos on this sucker. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. This wholesome family man. The guy had stage four cancer and just said, fuck it. <laughs> he, said, he said, well, I don't know about that. I don't know what was going on. There's some ladies that felt very unsafe on this boat, so I don't know. But oh, um, no, could be a little support. bit serial yeah. killer vibes, too. But he found out. He was going and he said, I'm going to live the pirate life. For me. It's a pirate life for me. <laughs> Docked up his yacht outside Martha's Vineyard and just went banana lands. Yeah. A bucket list a of a different minute. kind, I guess you could yeah. say. I mean, that sounds awesome. I got to say, it just sounds incredible. Anytime you get the chance to just go out, if you know you're going to die, like me, I know I have my family. I would make sure that they're taken after so I couldn't do this. But if I was a single fella, oh my. God, I'd be living like Hunter S. Thompson. I'd be doing all yeah, kinds of skydiving. I go Rocky Mountain climbing. I go 2.7 uh -huh. seconds on a bull man, Fu Man Chew. Uh -huh. I would love deeper and sweeter. Uh, you know. Yeah. You could do it too, even if you didn't have the money. I, I have to imagine you could just open up a bunch of credit cards and rack up mm -hmm. a whole bunch of debt before anyone catches wind. Mm -hmm. And you know, you just time it up that by the time they come to collect, you're like, I'll be dead in a week. Have at it. I'd watch the Eagles. Yeah. It was flying. <laughs> yeah. Just basically anything with Tim McGraw will get you going. Oh, would he do <laughs> that too? I'm... Is that what yeah, he Yeah, he would. Oh. And he'd do Faith Hill probably over 2,000 times, mm. I would imagine. Mm. Amen. Mm. And he's not lying about that. And I'm not lying about our good friends at Factor being delicious. If you haven't tried it yet, oh. you should. With the busy fall season already in swing. Cons, dude, you should be all over this with a new baby here. Like just taking these little meals and throwing them. No, in they're perfect because I'm normally be. prior prior to baby, I, I lived with a chef. I mean, she's in there yeah. every day whipping up an unbelievable dinner and it was excellent. Baby comes, we basically just eat when we can. We just don't have the time, you know. So I absolutely benefit from the factor meals because they're perfectly portioned too. It's it's not like too much, but it's also not leaving you hungry and they're delicious and a lot of variety. I highly, highly recommend you listen to what Chaps is about to say. Yeah, because if you want to make sure that you're eating well, just skip the extra trip to the grocery store and chopping, prepping, cleaning up too. 
while they're still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. You need to adjust your strive this autumn without missing a step. Choose from 35 weekly flavor packed, fresh, never frozen meals that promote a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences all ready to eat in two minutes. You can relish the autumn flavors of fall on a limited time, only hearty, comforting meal featuring uh, seasonal veggies like cranberry, pecan chicken, and apple du jour pork chops. Apple and pork chops get me going. Like that's what yeah. living up here now that they have the hearty ones to it factor. Because in Texas, it's like 80 degrees, 85 degrees. Are you really wanting to be that hearty? No. Not so much. But with these cold weather days coming, brother, put the stew, put the pork chops. Actually, put I, all you guys a I like being hearty. I like I'm, I'm curious how much crossover there is between the different branches of the military in terms of the food we got served. I wonder if there was like a big DOD wide contractor that got the, the food contract. Did you all have the, those stuffed pork chops? No, no, no. that was like one of the four meals yeah, that, that got those. rotated for dinner. Um, but anyway, oh. they certainly weren't as good as factors pork chops, but no, that's I just don't what think I think much. of when I think pork chops. <laughs> yep, so you can choose your two freshly packed flavored meals delivered to your door ready in just two minutes with no prep or no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash blog50 and use code blog50 to get 50% off. That's oh. that might be the highest off we've had yet. That's code blog50 at factormeals.com slash blog50 to get 50% off. A great deal, great product. You're gonna love it. All right, let's get talking about round number two. And today it's gonna be about some lie detector test. Before we get going, have any of you guys ever taken a lie detector test? No. No. Have you, Chaps? Me either. No, I no. wish I had, but I haven't. That would be incredible. I'm trying to get somebody to come in to do one on us to see what great. we're being truthful yeah. about, what we're not being truthful about. I'm excited about that. But I have heard and I saw some of the things that we're going to talk later on. And I think, Kate, you've mentioned before that you've done some of that as well. So let's talk a little bit about the lie detector. And again, this is because uh, U.S. Army What the Fuck Moments had a post that one of the units was sending around trying to get people to take a lie detector test. Before we talk about that post, let's talk about the lie detector test. Just a little bit of the specifics behind it. Yeah. Um, everybody has the gist at this point. We've all watched 40 episodes of Dateline in a row when we're hung over. And right. they, they cannot be used as evidence in court because they are so unreliable. There have been cases in the past where the lie detector test was the determining point. And turns out they were way fucking wrong because like mm -hmm. me, you could just be talking to me about normal shit and I feel anxious and nervous and my palms are sweating for some reason. Don't mean I'm lying to you. It just means I'm a weird ass lady. Okay. And mm -hmm. sometimes that comes across on lie detectors tests and it's like, oh, she's lying. And it's like, no, she's just socially fucking weird, dude. That's Kate. <laughs> no, like, God, God forbid I ever find myself in a situation. God. So, um, you, you would be terrible at that. There's no way everything would have to come back and conclusive because they would ask you something and you would be like, I'm not sure if I did, I'm sorry. <laughs> like you <would> just <laughs> apologize the entire time. Like what happened? Well, I was doing this and blah, blah, blah. No, <laughs> it would be on something would innocuous. They'd be like, is your shirt blue? And she'd be like, uh, uh, well, yeah, well, it's kind of like, it's like aqua, but that's like blue green. I don't really know. I'm sorry. I, I don't know how to answer this. That's, but that's basically it's, it's supposed to detect physiological changes in the body right. that are detected and measured by experts who have, they're supposed to be very highly trained to pick up things that not everybody else can, both by watching you while they're talking and by watching the machines connected to your body. Um, there's the electrical conductivity sensors that can note if you start to sweat. So if you do ask me certain things, I do start to sweat a little bit, you know, like uh, <laughs> we'll get into it. But, you know, me talking about the taint and all that stuff, I start to think oh, about yeah. time, get a little mm -hmm. sweaty. So you could say, Kate, are you nervous about giving birth? And I might start to sweat. Okay. Um, blood pressure cuffs. Does your heart rate go up when you're asked certain questions? Electrocardiogram, measuring the heart, picking up stress. So th there's different sensors attached to your body that when they're asking you questions, they start to pick up on. And they start with just like a placebo effect in some kind of pill study or something. They start with like a baseline. So it would be like, hey, chaps, what's your favorite sports team? The Jacksonville Jaguars. 
What's your address, last name, full credit card number, and social? 11823 Perla Joy, San Francisco, mm -hmm. uh, Texas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the credit card. I was hoping I was hoping to pirate you right there. I tried. The credit card? Let me see if I can remember. Four zero zero. I I did have to. Did you guys ever have your driver's license number memorized? No. Yeah. No, that's one I never I, had memorized. Because I didn't have a bank account whenever I lived in Florida. So if I worked at like Winn-Dixie or Burger King and I had to go cash my check at Winn-Dixie, I would have to write it down. And I still, 365-553-822-260, like writing it down every single day. There's certain numbers that never leave. I wish my credit card was one of those numbers because having to pull it out every oh, time yeah. you put in something, it's a pain in the ass. So I wish it's a pain in the ass. But yeah, generally, glad I got that out. <laughs> I'm glad you did too. Baseline <laughs> questions, though, like the most basic shit to establish, like, here's what their body is like when they are super calm. These questions aren't exciting. They're just boring ass, like, hey, what's your favorite sports team? What kind of ice cream do you like? Chocolate, like, super basic. Then they get into irrelevant questions. Um, chaps, when's the last time you had the meat sweats? It has nothing to do with this uh, case. Yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. Yesterday. Okay. Then they move into comparison questions um, that get a physiological response that maybe don't have to do with the case, but they can see if it makes you nervous. Like, have have you ever taken something that does not belong to you? Mm. And you would think, yeah. oh, God. Yeah, I have. I like, used and to love see, to steal. Yeah. They would see how you react to that. I may have <laughs> so, uh, stolen some high school dance jewelry from Claire's once by a group of girls uh -huh. that dared me to, and I still feel bad about it. Anyway, so the Free Willy by Michael Jackson CD three times. I well, love that. Then, album. That's impressive because didn't they have the little security tape on them? Yeah, but you could break them off pretty easy. Okay. Then they jump into the heavy duty Pirate. stuff. Did mm -hmm. you murder Karen? <laughs> hey, what's your favorite ice yes. cream? Did you murder Karen? You know, then they jump into it. And this is where the examiner really starts to interpret. They're essentially interpreters of these little zigzags all over this chart. And they read that and they provide just an opinion on whether they believe the individual is being deceptive or truthful. This is completely subjective, relies on the expertise of the examiner. And as has been found time and time again, there are huge miscarriages of justice that have happened throughout our history, specifically because there one, even the experts get this shit wrong. Like the most hardened, been doing it forever experts get this shit, the interpretation of these body responses wrong. And we're all so different. We all respond so differently. For the most part, it's like a load of crap. Uh, mm -hmm. So anyway, this text message comes out to this whole unit from a master sergeant. I would like to meet with everyone that had staff duty and their runners today, please, at 1300 hours. The MPs are going to come administer lie detector tests. Can you actually read it verbatim? Because I think it adds a little bit of flavor. Yeah, worth noting, this is a master sergeant who can't spell or write. So um, <laughs> I would like to meet with everyone that had staff duty and they runners today. Please, at 1300 hours, the MPs are going to come minister lie detector tests on everyone. So they have to, before that, to say something after all bets are off. So something has happened during this yeah. during this duty. <laughs> you got to found somebody, master sergeant. <laughs> you got to listen to last week's episode because that master sergeant turns out to be one of the members of Project One Hundred Thousand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but basically, it sounds like something has happened during this this duty span, this twenty four hour duty span, and this master sergeant thinks someone's not being truthful about whatever incident occurred. I'm going to assume it's something goofy at the barracks. I don't know. And Probably. they're saying, they're saying, good, good. Everyone wants to keep their mouth shut. Good. I'm bringing in the MPs and I'm going to lie detector test the shit out of all of you, which I mean, there's let, a lot. Let here. me ask you a question no, before we go into the lie detector test. Texting has got to be the worst thing that ever happened to a lot of senior enlisted. Like if yeah. you, like not being able to spell like before that would have never came out. All information was passed to like by formation and you mm -hmm. could speak it and give it out there. And typically you'd be a lot more well-spoken than written. But now if you're writing stuff like that, to me, if I'm reading that and I'm like a decently intelligent young troop, like put this, 
I'm not sure if I respect somebody as much that comes off as borderline illiterate, right? <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. And the worst part is in his head, when he's typing this all out, it all makes perfect sense. The cadence yeah. is there minus, you know, the punctuation that could really help. It all sounds okay in his head. So he hits send. He's like, all right, here comes the fear Nailed of God. It. That's going to get into all these soldiers. Got him. That's and by the way, baby. I just looked it up. This was for a missing battle flag from the CSM's office. Okay. <laughs> no. Perfect. That makes sense. That makes um, sense. So that means he's probably showing it to the Sergeant Major. Like, see, Sergeant Major, I'm trying to get your stuff back. I'm going to have mm -hmm. lie detectors come. Yeah, a lot of people, the responses were, I think I just had a stroke trying to read this one. Um, <laughs> MPs don't do lie detectors. I was going to say, MPs are definitely not administering lie detector tests. Not anymore. Yeah, a lot of no. people saying even CID doesn't have the talent to do that. Um, That's much you, says, you could just say, no, I'm not taking it. I mean, maybe in the military right. it's a little different because they could be like, no, no I'm ordering you. You, you don't know that. any you better. Still, no, I know, but I'm saying – that master sergeant could probably tell his soldiers, like, I'm ordering you, and oh. they don't know any better. They don't Without know that they can't doubt. say no. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And ZBT listeners are going to be like, oh, no way. <laughs> Captain Constant, I don't have to. <laughs> Captain who? <laughs> yeah. And so somebody else pointed out, it takes two hours to two hours to set up, run a baseline, and go through the questions per oh each God. polygraph I didn't for know each that. person. So, he's, so they're like, good luck. Okay, Sergeant Major, have fun doing that this weekend. Um, so, yeah. So, obviously, they were just probably trying to scare everyone into getting yeah. the flag returned, but they made themselves look like an idiot in the process. So. And so, we, the reason why I have that is because you have something like this, something as silly as a battle flag, but they took that same technology of the lie detector that cannot be used inside a court of law. It cannot be used for anything that's of remote legal importance, but... And they have like MPs that train their entire time. They're not able to do it. CID is not able to do it. Hardly anybody can do it in a, like a way that actually matters. But in 2007 and 2008, because of a system that was started in 2006, the army and the Marine Corps sent over to Afghanistan, these little handheld truth uh, lie detectors that they had. And these people, and instead of like the national accreditation of, lie detector folks that have to go to school for like three months doing it all day every day three months having training having an internship and then a six-month supervisory position to be able to conduct these the military trained e5s and e5s and e4s and then some warrant officers did it as well as supervisors and they just had these questions and it was attached to them where you could see that they were sweaty and it would show up as a lie now, if it's nerves inside of barracks because you stole a flag and that is going to be able to be detected and picked up on, imagine if you are getting picked up by American troops in full battle rattle in something oh. called the war on terror and that they're bringing you back to something that looks like, oh, I don't know, a prisoner of war spot. Like how nervous and sweaty you would be. Then you have somebody that went through a legit 72-hour training course to get this done even though the people that were behind the equipment said it's nowhere near ready for the battlefield. Like we can't even check its accuracy, like back in the civilian world, much less the battlefield. And the military was like, nah, man, send them out. And then as soon as they failed, it came up as red. That was probable cause to bring somebody in for further inspection. So it's essentially just a way to say and have like on an official memo, we're going to bring in anybody we want to, and our probable cause is going to be because they failed this lie detector test, and there's not shit any court could have said anything about it. Crazy. Quite the approach. Yeah. Quite nice. the approach. Right. Now you're getting roasted on the internet. because. Yeah. And what do you do, like, in that situation? If you're, like, if you're one of the ones getting caught, I mean, imagine if we had been caught, like, if Iraq or Afghanistan had a, a legit military like we do, and you get caught and you're on that lie detector... Who, who is able to stay calm enough where they're not going to fail? No, I mean. it, 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 no, you're right. It, you're just put in a, a situation where you're set up for failure, essentially. So, yeah, 100%. all those different wanna, types of things. Yeah. Like, Kate, you've talked about tell, about the eye thing, that the scanner. Yep, the eyeball scanner. And I spent several months outside Camp Leatherneck in the boonies of the desert in a trailer. Um so it was a trailer outside the wire, like just in the middle of the desert. And um, Afghans, like a construction trailer. Yeah. Afghans who wanted to work for for the U.S. or for one of our contractors would roll up and 
it would be part of the vetting process would be to scan their eyeballs and take their fingerprints. Oh my God, I, the name of the system will come to me right after the show. And we were bored one day and it'll match. So say I scan your eyeball, it will pull up if there's anybody that the US has taken in before for like terrorist or bad guy reasons or whatever, you'll pop up again in the system. It's like fingerprinting here in yeah. the US with criminals, whatever. Um, and so we were bored in the trailer one day and we decided to scan our own eyeballs and we all popped up as Afghan terrorists. We all yeah. matched. And it was like, these things are so fucking inaccurate. And the higher ups were like, yeah, they don't like, this doesn't actually do or mean anything. And then there was the awkward moment where I had a guy with a glass eyeball. Went to go scan it. <laughs> Not a real eyeball. Very embarrassing. It like I falls said, out. There's a spider up behind it and everything. Yeah, part of <laughs> me. Mean, but it makes sense that it didn't work because now, even now, whenever your cell phone, if your face gets yeah. shaven a little bit or you can't have it, your <laughs> iPhone doesn't even pick it up, which is a lot better technology than whatever we were using at the time. Like the, the, that anyone thought that that would work, that you could, that we had the technology all the way around the world to be able to scan somebody's retina and identify who they were. Handheld device by an E3 is nuts. Like it's well, crazy. I mean, in theory, it, it's a great idea. It, oh, in great practice, theory. It's a great, great idea to Absolutely. do that. Absolutely. And keep, great way to keep track of those terrorists. Skeptical but, Kate here. <clears throat> if I'm a contractor looking to make bank off the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, I'm like, you know what these idiots will buy from me? Uh, I promise them was. this thing is a lie detector. And uh, no, that's sell exactly them a what it was. $14 million contract for this garbage. And they're going to probably a lot it. more than that. They did probably the same so much thing more than with that. that. They designed really? programs that could smell explosive. The, they were supposed to be better than dogs, and they were fucking terrible. Right. And they spent hundreds of millions of dollars to do this, to have, like, at the beginning of gates, you know, like at the beginning of uh, most bases, like the large bases, where they'll have those huge um, carports that even semi-truck trailers yeah. can go underneath, and you could do the checks. Yeah. They were going to have, you know, whenever you're walking out of like a cafeteria in elementary school and you open up the door and it's like <clears throat> the huge wind that goes down that's designed yeah. to keep flies out. They wanted to have something like that, but it picked up explosive particles as it dropped down. It was the ability to pick up explosive particles. That shit didn't work. They spent yeah. tens of millions of dollars on this program and you could go by with one black lab and be like, no, it's actually in there and, no, and well, know where it is almost instantly. You know what's interesting that makes me think back to the whole situation with Theranos and how General Mattis got involved and like, oh, this this is great. There's so many ideas out there that, again, in practice, awesome, awesome ideas. And I think we forget sometimes that all the people that are making these decisions, we just assume – just like, you know, people in Congress, we just assume like they're the best and brightest and the smartest people we have making decisions. They're mostly just like us. You know, and no, they, they, they mostly just want to make money. They just want to make money. That's all they care about is making money. Well, oh, oh the people kid. selling I'm these so, products. I'm so beaten down now. I just think they're all just no, scum. let it out, Kate. Yeah. yeah let it all out. Mm. Scum. My God. Wow. Mm. I don't know if we were going to yeah, have a God scum. God bless them. But I mean, yeah. it also comes from a place where in the military, if you go – way outside the box or you think that you're doing something so different you're going to get rewarded for it right like the person that had this idea that brings yep. in especially since they implemented it in the combat zone whoever came up with this idea be like look we can have these handheld lie detector tests and we do it you know they got an award for it Probably and even if it fails mm -hmm. even if it fails miserably and costs the military millions of dollars the write-up says Got and innocent people one, their lives. 1,000 of these lie detector devices and trained 10,000 troops on blah, blah, blah. It leaves out the part where it's like, and it was a miserable failure that cost us. <laughs> yeah, it briefs well. At all. Briefs yeah. well on paper. It would. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. That's really... some of the most important stuff. Does it brief well? Yeah. yeah. And also crazy, Kate, that they just put you in a trailer outside the wire and just like, hey, sit here all day. <laughs> And, and you, you know, have all these Afghan nationals that are going to come in. And I'm sure none of them have any ties to any of the bad guys and won't tell them that, hey, they're just a bunch of Americans. me and two Lance Corporals just sitting in this trailer all day <laughs> that if you blow it up, you'll absolutely kill them. Great idea. Yeah. You know what helps when you're feeling that way, Kate? Hmm. Keeping it real with a zen. In. I know what you mean. Uh, you guys know we're all about keeping it real. So let's talk about something making a change for vets and active duty right now. Zinn nicotine pouches. 
If you're looking for a new way to enjoy nicotine, America's number one nicotine pouch comes in 10 varieties like wintergreen, Ooh. spearmint, and coffee, and two strengths, three milligrams to kick off your experience, and six milligrams to take it up a notch. Zen is smoke-free, spit-free, and hands-free, giving you more freedom to move. Plus, it comes as is, no batteries or devices needed to get your Zen on, which is one less thing to worry about on your next trip to the PX. Look, when it comes to making a change, we know progress is more important than perfection. Zinn knows it too because everyone's on a different path. If you are curious about what a premium nicotine experience looks like, head to your local convenience store, PX or Zinn.com, that's Z-Y-N.com to find out. Warning, this product is nicotine, nicotine is a chemical. All right. Now, before we move on to some sage round and alibis, I have the squad to prepare two truths and a lie to see who, if we can detect the lies. Um, so, Cons, you go first for either your two truths and a lie. All right. Two truths and a lie. I once shot 72 in a round of golf. I'm in the movie John Wick. I once asked out on a date Aaron Andrews. Ooh. Mm, these are good. All right. Was it so mini first, golf? <laughs> so first well, one, 70, a, 72. Really, yeah. Okay, just trying to work through these because I've known you a long time. And we've had a lot of stories, and I think some of these sound familiar. I'm going to say, what was your second one? I'm in the movie the John Wick. I'm in the movie Okay, John so Wick. I'm going to say that that's going to be a lie detector trick that you're trying yourself because I've – I know you were in the Dark Knight Rises, like you had that one. I don't know if I remember you saying John Wick. I think the other two stories are, and if it's like not a 72, it's like a 76. So I think you're telling just a little bit of a half truth, but I'm going to say number two is the lie. Kate, what do you think for cons? I'm going to say number one. I think you're a good golfer. I don't know if you've, gotten a 72 yeah i'm saying the golfer one all right what all right. is it cons kate's correct my best round in my life is a 73 so i've never <laughs> shot a 72 but um, i was right in the method i was right yeah. in the method that you're like very close you know what it was i was counting the heartbeats in his neck when he said it very <laughs> quick. Yeah. his eyes his eyes you moved couldn't up use sweat for confidence and uh <laughs> and i had a feeling so mm -hmm. hmm. good job all right job. kate what about you Okay. Once in Afghanistan, I ran into Geraldo Rivera and I was so startled. I said, you're Geraldo. And he said, I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, one time at the old Barstool office that only had, if you recall, two, two singular bathrooms in the middle of the room. I, mm. I generally only poop at home. I couldn't hold it. I took a poop when I opened the door who was waiting to go in Snooky from the Jersey shore. And she was very pregnant and I felt terrible. Okay. Number three, I once hooked up with Art Garfunkel's nephew of Simon and Garfunkel. Wow. Those met are him all... at a bar, met him out at a bar in Astoria. He was on tour with his uncle. They were. They had just done New York City. I said, "This is a name that's going to put asses in seats." Kate Garfunkel, please, let's do mm -hmm. this. Okay. All right. So I know for sure number two <laughs> is true because I remember when I think we were on radio and Kate came in and she was like, "I need to tell you something. I just took a dump and then Snooky walked in." Yeah, I wanted to die. I wanted to die. She was so pregnant. I felt and that so was terrible. one of the that was one of the celebrities that you were like impressed to meet. Like your list of who's impressive to you from that you've met at Barstool. Gritty, might Snooki, be the Ron yeah. Weasley. Ron Weasley. Um, that was a, like, the kombucha girl. Like the Rock, <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Johnson could come in and I'd be like, well, that's neat. But but like Snooky for me was huge and. I don't know how long she had Chats, to wait. Do outside. you think I should try to go outside and smoke a cigarette with Ron with Weasley? Ron Weasley. <laughs> but I, yes, that is true. I did poop and then Snooky. And I don't know how long she was waiting outside that door. And it like killed my soul. Um, I didn't know what to say. So that one's Con, true. What do you think it is for Kate? 
I think the lie is the Art Garfunkel one. Um, just because I, I don't know if Art Gar Garfunkel has any children. Um, and I'm pretty sure I, I'm, have I'm have almost positive. Have a oh, it's a nephew. True. I thought you said grandson. Yeah. My bad. No. Um, that's true. Okay. Um, but I'm sticking with that one just because I also think I recall you telling the Geraldo story in Afghanistan. <laughs> and it makes sense that he would be over there with like the USO or something. Or even with the news, given his his news background, so I'm going with the Art Garfunkel. Yeah, I did get yeah, drunk at a bar with Art Garfunkel's nephew, but he went to the bathroom and never came back when I was putting it on. God, Irish yeah. goodbye. Yeah, yeah. Irish goodbye by Art Garfunkel's mm -hmm. nephew. So it wasn't for lack of trying. No, I tried. I did try. That should have been true, but something's wrong with that guy. Ah. Huh. Oh well. Yeah. All right. Japs. So here's mine. When I was seven years old, I hung a lizard from my testicles. Um, number two, I once <laughs> put a worm through my nose like a spaghetti noodle. Like, you know how you can suck a yeah. spaghetti yeah, yeah. noodle up and go like this? I once did that with a worm. And number three, I would take a bath in the dog bath at work after a long PT session. I know that one's true. I'm pretty sure you've told us about that one. So I absolutely believe that one. I think the first one, You did you say how old you were when you did that? Yeah, I was seven. Yeah, no, you were still a God-fearing man. And and I don't believe that you would have done that with your private region. Because mm, that would be we're some talking way. About, Cons, we're talking about a Jacksonville, Florida kid. That's just true. Mm -hmm. Shoot. Mm. Uh, this is where I'm torn. No, I, I think the first one's uh, the lie. You know what I mean? Like whenever you used to do it with uh, earrings, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And go, yeah. The clamp on. How old were you? Was this, was the worm through the nose a smoke pit entertainment thing? Yeah, that was probably about 23 or 24. That one, because you, you hesitated there. I didn't like the way your eyes wiggled around. They're actually all true. All of them are true. Oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <All> great. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the lizard thing until um, mm. I was thinking of things that I had. That lizard is sitting about. around with his buddies right now. So there I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on to some save rounds and alibis. Kate, we'll start with you today. Um, I wanted to talk about a TikTok that I saw last night. Our algorithms are all probably wildly different. But I follow a ton of military women on my so across the social media, and I'm always keeping tabs. I'm like messaging you guys. Here's what's going on with the female Marines right now, like the yeah. pages, or whatever. Like we, I don't share it as private stuff, but like when I see something that shocks me, sometimes I talk to you guys about it. Whatever. And October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and I saw a TikTok by an airman named Riley. And she shared her story of dating a fellow airman who she shares through this series of clips. It starts off with text messages of he's love bombing her. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me, blah, 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 blah. And then you start to see him become verbally abusive. Then you see the hole punched in the wall. Then you see, you know, you see as this story progresses, as this man becomes violent with her. She kicks him out and is living on her own. And he keeps texting her. Wow. It looks like you're Snapchatting other guys. Wow. You're wearing blue today. Wow. Very specific things. And it turns out this airman had hidden a camera inside a stuffed animal in the corner of her room and Jeez. had been watching her for months. She goes to report it. And what does the command say? Are you sure you want to ruin this airman's career? Is what they say to her. Are you kidding me? She and the pressure of that is so immense. She decides that he ruined his own career, not me. Yeah. This is him doing this. And she decided to press forward despite the immense fear that that must have come with. And in the end, she gets victim advocates. She gets a, a wonderful team uh, from the Air Force on her side of victims advocates and takes him to court and ends up winning. And he ends up facing consequences for it. Um, I believe he got kicked out. He got six months, like whatever. I I'll have to pull up the story again, but I just, um, I don't know. I was watching it last night and then it led me down a rabbit hole of other, but 
I just want to commend her for not backing down. It's very difficult when you're lower ranking, when higher ranks are discouraging you from doing something. And like, I'm a rule, for, like for the most part, as big of a piece of shit I am, like I, I'm inclined to like when someone much higher than me tells me to do something, I'm like, I guess that's what I should do. Like, so I just wanted to commend any men and women can be victims of domestic violence. It's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And to anybody who stands up for themselves, no matter how hard it is, which is so, so hard, but her story like really moved me last night, especially when it got to the part where the command was like, are you sure you want to ruin this guy's career? My jaw fucking dropped. Um, but her story is kind of blowing up right now. And then other women uh, in the military are sharing their stories. But um, it reminded me of when I was in, it was like, well, where do you go? What do you do? They give you all this death by PowerPoint of telling you like suicide awareness and domestic violence and blah, blah, blah. And then when it actually happens, everybody's like, well, who am I supposed to talk to? Where do I go? What's the safest option that protects my privacy? Mm -hmm. Like what's whatever. Um, so I don't know. For the sake of, if, especially if you're in any kind of leadership position, if you're an NCO, do the research on how it works in your command and like know how to help the people around you and what to look out for and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm rambling, but I was just really moved by that story no, last it's night. Great advice. Um, yeah, I mean, geez, do so. you want to ruin this airman's career? It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. excuse me, like he's breaking laws, he's harassing me. Like this isn't about his career. This is about punishing someone for doing horrible yeah. things. What a terrible thing by whomever that commander was. And thankfully to, to document, document everything, have the receipts for everything. She had mm -hmm. all the receipts and she was yeah. able to kick this loser out. So he couldn't do it to anybody, any other airman in the, in the air force. So, but anyway. you're right about that too, with the, the, the rank structure, it's intimidating yes. to, to go, you know, especially enlisted to officer and, and jumping over ranks, going directly to that person who there's a good chance she never spoke to that person before and had yeah. any kind of relationship other than, all right, that's my chain of command. So that I could see how that's very, very intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, Kate? Um, no, I, no, <laughs> let's do We need an update. We need an uh, update. You told us wait. about your PT last week. <laughs> oh, my pelvic floor PT. Mm. Yeah. Wait, did I tell you guys about it? Yeah. That what? I was going or did I tell you, you about were going. afterwards? You, no, no, you, you were going. Yeah, you didn't tell us about it. It was a little confusing because I got two main pieces of advice. One, the lady was an angel. O older lady, like in her 60s, cute as a button. And one, I didn't know. She was like, if you want to, we can go all in. And I was like, I'm going to keep my yoga pants on. But thank <laughs> you. Uh, but she did put her thumb right on my taint. Uh, and... <laughs> She's like, breathe in. We'll see what we're dealing with here. And I was like, yeah. So how, well, how are you positioned, Kate? Are you like standing up? Or no, I was laying you? down. Okay. And uh, she gave me some warning. I was like, all right, let's do this thing. But I, I didn't know what to expect. So whatever. But the two pieces of advice, which were conflicting, we've all heard it. She's like, tighten it up. Do those Kegels. Do those exercises whenever you're in the car, whenever. But she's also like, but also loosen it up. So... Pat is supposed to put vitamin E oil on his thumbs and play my bussy like an Xbox. Okay. He's supposed to stretch out my perineum. So when the baby comes, that thing's like a grizzled old vet. So stretched out that the baby just rockets on through without ripping me up. This time. All okay. right. Tighten it up, but loosen it up, tighten it up, but loosen it up. So I'm a little, I'm a little up in the air, uh, but she was lovely. It was nice to talk to her. That's good. Anyways. Every time we talk about this and you talked about how like all of it's falling down, you know, when you're like dressing a chicken and it's like completely raw and it's like the whole where the neck used to be, you know, and, like it used, yes, the neck yes. used to be all cl closed, but now the neck is a little bit open. So you got to like, pull it and close it and then <laughs> snip it away so that you can actually baste it. That seems like that's what's happening. Your doctor would be a good chef. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's going on. So that's fun. And we'll see. All right. Todd, what about you? Um, really quickly. Um, yeah. You know, we talked about our uh, factor meals being 50% off. If something's 50% off, I don't even care what it is. I'm probably getting that. That's yeah. too good of a deal mm -hmm. to pass up. You got to at least try it. 50% off. Yeah. Unreal. You got to try it. 
Um, and then also, I saw a story from CBS News yesterday about the Navy cracking down on the you know special warfare, the SEALs, using PEDs and, and steroids. And I was just kind of curious what you thought about our special operations across all uh, branches of the military using performance enhancing drugs. Well, I would say straight from the jump, I am okay with it for the Green Berets and I'm okay with it for the MARSOC community. The Navy SEALs got enough stuff going on. They, they haven't demonstrated over the last couple of years that they have a lot of discipline. So I would say Navy SEALs, you guys got to take like a five-year steroid break at least. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but other than bit. that, as long as you aren't exhibiting like rage – I don't care. It's like, for me, it's baseball. Like if you, if you can perform the way that you need to and steroids make you that much better, fine. Like, I don't, I really don't care. Like what's wrong with stronger people, as long as it's not mm -hmm. messing with their hearts and they're going through like normal physical condition, stronger, the better make them super soldiers as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. What's interesting is it made me think I was reading the story and I immediately thought back to the documentary with Arnold Schwarzenegger that I watched a couple months ago. And he was very candid. He's like, yeah, we all took steroids back in that day, but it was very the closely is like coming. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was very closely <laughs> monitored and administered by doctors. So it was a very controlled thing where like if you're doing and I don't know much about, you know, steroid use because I've never used them. But I have to imagine if they're administered by a doctor and they're done in such a way that you monitor the effects, how is it not only going to make everybody that much better? And when you're talking about these special ops communities where their bodies are essentially a weapon, why wouldn't you want to make it better? So I was kind of torn where in the past I would have been like, all right, yeah, you got to you know monitor that and, and not let steroid and, and drug use get out of hand, which I agree because that was part of the article too, is the command was saying how like it's gotten out of hand. So yeah, you don't want to let drug use become rampant within your ranks, but if it's administered by doctors it makes, gives me pause that I'm not as, but you also say, don't want rid of it. You don't, you don't want our enemies like Iran and uh, Russia to be saying that we have low T Navy seals either. Right. <laughs> you know, I don't yeah. think you want that, that rumor yeah. getting out. Yeah. Ted Cruz would have an absolute is... field day. <laughs> it's not sustainable. And if these guys are supposed to be going to the most austere environments, is that what you want them going off cold turkey off steroids? Uh, if that yeah, just happens, a little like, violent to their MREs. It's not cares? sustainable. We don't know the long term effects, but we do know there are negative effects. And we do know these groups are known to go off the rails from time to time. And, bad and on the rails. <laughs> God bless. God bless. Them. Hey, it's a good, it's a fun time before everything falls apart. I'll tell you that. I just think it's worth a conversation. But, I don't think it's as cut and dry as it maybe once was. Is well, all I think I'm too, it speaks to the culture of these groups and the immense amount of pressure that they're under to be right. like the fucking alpha dog, like which we need. I think you just want to look hot. I think that's all it is. Like, but I think it's hot. about getting, this is what ultimately they want cum gutters. Everybody yeah. wants those. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, like the kin, like you're kin enough with the, the little pelvic line, you know. Cum gutters like and camo pants. And Buddy, forget it. I understand. I understand. The, which, what was that movie? That Fight Club. You, Troy? Troy, no, too. Troy or Fight Club, yeah. Fight Club. Yeah, Fight Club. Fight Club and is the Snatch, premier. Really, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? All right, so, so my, is that it, Cons? Yeah, that's it. All right, so mine... I'm fucking tired of these Marine Corps generals and really like the Army four stars, too, that are coming out of the woodwork now. Like John Kelly released this statement whenever somebody asked this was asked about Trump becoming the nominee again. And Kelly came out swinging and he said, what can I add that's not been said already? A person that thinks those who defend their country in uniform or who shot or shot down or seriously wounded in combat or spend years being tortured as POWs are all, quote, suckers because there is, quote, nothing in it for them. A person that did not want to be seen in the presence of military amputees because it didn't, it wasn't a good look for me. A person who demonstrated open contempt for a Gold Star family, for all Gold Star families, and Kelly is one as well, on TV during the 2006 campaign and rants that our most precious heroes who gave their lives in American's defense are losers and wouldn't visit their graves in France. And he goes on and on and on. Shut the fuck up, John Kelly. 
you still knew that in 2016, all of it was before he took a position as the chief of staff of the White House. Like everybody trying to save face because of what Trump is going through now and what he looks like now, all of them fucking pussies across the board. That includes General Mattis. That includes Millie. That includes everybody that was in uniform at the time. And I know when you're in uniform, it's different. But when you're a four star general, one of your best responsibilities and greatest responsibilities is calling out some bullshit. That is huge. Like if you like General Kelly wasn't in the military anymore, he could have easily resigned and said the reason why he was resigning easily. And everybody would have respect him. But doing this five years later when he's back on the campaign trail, not even when he was still in office, cowardly across the board moral cowardice from all of those guys probably the three top generals of the war on terror general allen general mattis and general kelly all of them huge disappointments and more ca morally cowardly across the board in my opinion yeah. did you guys see that report no i did and then that i was expecting to read something new i was like wait i already heard all these things before so like why is it getting pushed back to the forefront of the news cycle and i'm just tired of hearing it it's like if you need more information to form an opinion, uh, you know, on, on that person at, at this point, I don't know what you're doing. I think everyone's kind of made up their mind at this point. So it's just, uh, uh I'm just tired of it. And the old, so the old adage is true. Like he could have shot somebody on fifth Avenue and his supporters would stay there. And I think that's been proven right at this point. Yeah. And it's just yeah. sad to see people like general Kelly throw away their reputation for that guy. Um, well, I think that's, that's what it. they're trying to do. I think that's what they're trying to do, though. They're trying to salvage the reputation. Oh, by, for like, sure they are. Yeah. You know, like, hey, I know I was associated with this person, but no, 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 no. He said all these bad things. And the real I, problem I there is that. everybody hates you. Everybody hates you yeah. when you do that. Because people, like, there's certain folks that would be like, we always knew this shit. And the other people will be like, how could you turn them back on them right now? We need you. We need to take our country back. Like yeah, I think honestly, stuff. though, it also just speaks to how convoluted our political system is now. And the games you have to play to get into these positions and 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 uh, jobs if you really want them. And maybe that catapults you to something else beyond you know that, that job and next phase of your life. It's all a big game. So just getting more and more. Right, well. The only way I'll care is if any of them get cum gutters. And that's how they stand at the mic when they're presenting their, their info. Otherwise, I think I'm John Kelly is probably the closest to getting that. Yeah. Sorry. Last right. thing. Speaking of old people oh. started and watching. I just realized I'm going to completely miss the yak. I'm such an idiot. I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> sorry. This is the last thing. And then we can be done. Uh, Alex and I just started watching. Uh, we watched the first episode of the golden bachelor. It's the sweetest thing. It's the sweetest. I know. I, I got to get into watch it. it. No spoilies. It. No spoilies. No spoilies. Oh. spoilies yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm That's finishing up Love is Blind. If General Mattis hadn't gotten married, I would love to see him on a show like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> All right, sound the retreat.